Those of you who were here. Last week, go ahead. Right, we praise God. Okay, so that we must be about our Father's business. And what's our Father's business? Seek and save the lost. Seek and save the lost. How do we do that? By becoming fishers of men. And I say that for you single ladies. It does not mean that you go out hunting for men. That means fishers of men. Mean that we go to bring in people into the kingdom of God as fishers of men. And then the, we study uh, that the five benefits of salvation are the bait to put on our hooks to bring people in. So there were five benefits that we taught about. So by the raising of the hands, and I want each one to do one only, uh, and let's see if we can keep them in order, because it's important to learn things in order so that here it's good, but it's when you're out there, when you're at a restaurant, when you're at a mall, when you're at, in, in, uh, in your car, and somebody tells you, well, what's this about being saved? Uh, 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 I don't, I don't, you, know, you don't know how to respond. So we have to tell them what benefits we have, why you guys accepted the Lord Jesus, so this way uh, we respond with wisdom and we can bring people into the kingdom of God. So what's benefit number one to, uh, in reference to the five benefits of salvation? Hey, eternal life. Eternal life. And what is eternal life? That you live with God forever. Okay. And if you don't, if I don't want to accept God. I'm an unbeliever now. They say, so I'm going to challenge you. Go. Okay, so I'll die when I get to hell. You who, you what? I'll die. No, you get, you get born again, which is a second... Uh... Okay, no, remember, our spirits never die. Okay. okay, so that's it. Our bodies die. Okay. And that's what people think, that because your bodies die, that it's over when we leave this body. No, it's only the beginning. We're entering into the new portion. So either when we accept the Lord Jesus, we go to live with Him in eternity, in heaven, in paradise. Isn't that good? Uh, let's go on vacation to paradise. Did you all sign up for that trip? Let's go on vacation where it's 2 million degrees and, and, and there's no air conditioning. You want to go on that trip? Those are the two brochures that we have. So, so now remember though, that you either live your life in eternity in heaven or you live your life in eternity in hell. And that's why it's important for us to learn this so that we can bring as many people as we can uh, into heaven with us, especially our family members, especially the people that God surrounds us. Each one of us has people that only you guys can reach. I can't reach them. That they'll listen to you. So each one has 10 or 20 people. That, that That's your core group. That's your little circle, right? And it's everybody has a circle. So this is not only for me. Each one. And you're the one that God has designated to be the person to speak to that person so that we don't prepare ourselves how we're loving our neighbors as God loved us. We're not. And what are we going to do if we don't share the gospel? We can't force people in, but we have to at least share with them and lead them by examples in Jesus' name. Amen? And I know I'm looking at powerful men and women of God by faith in Jesus' name. Rita. I just want to make a comment. Um, like, it's so hard to, to go out there and don't about God, especially, I hear it the other day, and, and it's, it's funny, because when the person's like, I'm like, like, you feel like you're boring them, I don't know, for some reason, I can say so enthusiastic about what I was, I wanted to talk to her about God, how I was, I fe I'm feeling, uh -huh. but she was so, like, Tune yeah. out, she, she tuned out, and but she's like, let me leave before you can go, like, let me, get I'm like, oh, wow, and it, so it felt, it feels uncomfortable, so right. it's like so hard to talk to other people, especially when they're like that. Next. Uh, all right, right, but now, wait, but two, two things, two things. You're saying it's so hard, that means it's going to be hard. Remember, whatever you say, so even though something is hard, don't say that. Say, say that I can do it in Jesus' name. Don't ever say, whatever you can't do, don't say that you can't do it. Say, God is going to help me to do it in Jesus' name. Gloriana. You know, obviously, before I approach someone, I pray in my head for two seconds. But the most important thing to me is always to think back to the fact that in the Bible it says to not be ashamed of his name. Because if you are, he will be ashamed of you. So even if you're feeling uncomfortable or, you know, whatever, I always just remind myself that, you know what, I'm not ashamed of him. If you want to listen and take it, good. If not, I'm not afraid to speak. I will tell you. And that's it. I mean, it's helped me to always kind of go back to that little line to never be ashamed. And it just got easier for me. 
I mean, yeah, there's times when I approach people that are not interested, but I make a point to finish what I'm saying and then goodbye. You know? It's not a shame. Right, right. I, feel, I feel bad. Well, with some that people, it's different. No, right, now, but, but here's the thing. One of the things where I got blessed so much, because I, I, we were in the beginning, right? People are getting saved, people are getting saved at all Bible studies, right? Then finally, you know, maybe the fifth or sixth, nobody accepted the Lord. So as I'm driving home with my son, I said, man, nobody accepted the Lord today. He said, Dad, they didn't reject you, they rejected Jesus. So when people don't want, they don't, they're not rejecting us, they're rejecting our Lord yeah, Jesus. Amen. 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 But, but Amen. don't take it that they're rejecting us, they're rejecting Jesus, and they're rejecting rejected Jesus to his face. They spit on him. They, they made fun of him. They, uh, they uh, you know, they uh, spoke against him. So if they did that to our Lord, they're definitely going to do it to us. But we have to say this, as the Bible says, dust your feet and dust your boots off and go on to the next person and just keep on loving everybody because not everybody's going to accept it in regards to that. So we can't take it personal because that's how uh, the devil will shut us down when we think it's us. But here's the thing. We always have to pray before we speak and ask Holy Spirit to give us guidance on what to say to the people. And then we have to have wisdom when we speak to people because not every time everybody's ready to receive at that moment. Now that woman who sees that you're in enthusiasm, right? Whenever she's down and whenever the world is good, the devil is beating her up, she's going to remember, I mean, I'm going to speak to that girl who's always happy and bubbly and that's where it's going to go. So don't think that, yeah, maybe she didn't accept you today or yesterday. But that stays in her mind, and when it's when they're at the right time, that's why we have to be ready, and we can't say I'm too busy now. Or remember that you, re I wanted to talk to you before, you didn't want to pay attention to me. Now you want me? Can never. We always have to be ready to open our hands and the spirit of reconciliation and loving people in Jesus' name. Amen. You want to say something? Yeah. Go ahead. But also, our job is really to just plant the seed. God will be the one that's gonna make make it grow. All you got to do is keep sharing the word and then let God do his, he's going to do his thing. Right, let God be God in, in our lives. Now, but here's the thing, and remember this. All of you guys, what would you rather do? Hear a, 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 a testimony or see one? Right, see one, right? Because you can talk the game, but people want to see the results, which is tying into the lesson. That's why I'm not, I know we're on the lesson today. People, you know. God is good, and you can't pay your bills. God is good, and you're always complaining. God is good, you're saying, man, you know, what's, what's coming out of your mouth is one thing, but what you're showing is totally different, so that's when they have an issue. They ain't going to want to hear from you because we're not reflecting, we're not living what, what the Word of God says, so we're not being good witnesses in Jesus' name. So again, but we have to, that's why we have to learn how to become better witnesses, better fishers of men in Jesus' name, and know at the right time. Eddie, as I said before, I've shared with you, I call him the mayor of the gym because he talks to everybody. I don't talk to nobody. And I can go in and out and, and, and look at my job here talking. I just mind my own business and people are looking. I'm just minding my own business. If they come to me, then I open up because I know they're ready. Or he prepares them on the, on the table and then I, I go in for the, you know, for the, uh, for the, I'm the closer, I'm the, you know, the closer of the deal. Yeah. So remember, it, it, we, it's not our job to, uh, we have to spread the word, but not everyone is going to receive from us. Some people will receive more from another person than us. Sometimes our families are not going to receive from us. They'll receive from a stranger more than us. I say, man, I've been speaking to my cousin, my brother. He don't want to receive from me, and he accepts it from someone else. We have Eduardo, whose brother is in Christ, and he didn't want to receive anything from his brother, and yet he received it you know, through our ministry here, the things of God. So you know, we, we have different people. Uh, and we can't think that we're super Christian and, and you know, everybody's going to receive from us because it's, um, we just plant the word and let God do his job in Jesus' name. Amen? So, uh, benefit number one, what is it? What's benefit number two? Raise your hand so we can keep it in order. Blanca. Forgive us a sin. What does that mean? Right, so, so if you repent from your sins, God is faithful to forgive no matter what. So that includes for murderers, rapists, uh, dictators. So you, you got it, so we can't say, oh, you did too much. Uh, no, that's forgiveness of sins 
across the board. And sometimes we don't like that, and we start leveling sin. To God, sin is sin. Yes, Ruben? Define sin. And sin is anything that, that's against the Word of God. So, like, sin is, you, you can have a little old lady, and you can have a motorcycle guy with 50 tattoos and piercings in that, and you say, man, he's wicked and she's nice, and that guy is, is, a, is um, real humble, and the little old lady is the one that's wicked. Uh, so we can't go by outer, you know, man goes by the outer appearance, and God looks at our hearts on, on that. So we don't know who's who, uh, and, and sin is anything that's against the word of God on that, okay? Uh, and it, to, to God, if you rob a cookie, or if you rob the bank, uh, if you remember, murder to God, what is, in the New Testament, what is murder? What is murder? If you hate a brother, okay, in God's eyes, you've committed murder. Hate someone, okay? So, not kill someone, he calls us a murderer. What's a thief? Anyone, if you're not tithing, you're a thief. The Bible calls you a, tithe, you know, a, a thief. So don't think that's the guy who robs a bank or robs a store. A thief is those. So there are a lot of thieves in the kingdom of God. You know, okay, so there are a lot of thieves. So remember, it's not what we think, what the world has conditioned us to, is what the word of God says uh, that we should be in Jesus' name. But forgiveness of sins. So that's one where I went three times on that line. When I said, ooh, all my sins can be forgiven. That's a good benefit that we have to understand when there's people that are really uh, condemned uh, by the devil in reference to something that they did. You come in at them with that bait in reference to forgive. Come in, come to the kingdom of God that God will forgive you in Jesus' name. Amen? So that's benefit number two. What was number one? Number two? What's number three? Raise your hand. That's why I get in the back also. Uh, she did one. Anyone else? Is more good? Anyone? Lara. Healing. healing. Okay, so what is healing? Healing is the cure for our body, our soul, our heart, our bucket. Okay. Our relationship. And why are we healed? Why? Because of the grace of God, the favor of God. How did it happen? I'm testing you guys because an unbeliever is going to test you guys. You've got to be better be. Not just to say something, you've got to be able to respond. Why do we have healing? Because of all the beating that he got um, by his um, by his stripes, by his stripes we, are we are healed. healed. So remember, so when he got the beating, okay, that we rightfully deserve, he took all sicknesses, all disease, all oppression, all depression on him. He paid the price. Who's him? Jesus, okay, Jesus paid the price for us. So if you accept the Lord Jesus, you're entitled to have healing. It doesn't matter if the world, the doctors don't have a cure for it. Uh, does Jesus have a cure for AIDS? Yes. Diabetes? Yes. Uh, colon cancer? Yes. You know, uh, whenever they send you home, the doctors say, we got no cure for you no more. We tried everything that we have. Go to Jesus. But now, why do we go to Jesus at the end instead of going to Jesus in the beginning? Okay, because we have more faith in the doctor and a man uh, that we, or a woman than we have in our Lord Jesus. But it's by our by Jesus' stripes, that, that's the key. But we, we were healed already. So now, you might say, well, I know this Christian and they went to church all the time. Why did, uh, why did they die? So uh, if, somebody, if, if I'm an unbeliever and I throw that at you because you came at me with healing, what are you going to respond? Somebody, help her out. So my question is, well, why did such and such die if Jesus took all of our sins on his body, or in that we are healed by Jesus Christ? If somebody tells you that, what would you respond to them? That was God's will. Oof, that was a, that's an F <laughs> on that one. God's will is for us to have life and more abundance if we're to live to 120. That's God's will. Whose will is it for us to die? Satan. Satan's. So it's the devil that wants to kill steal and destroy everything about us, okay? But what would you say? But I heard, I saw that woman come up in the healing line. Why did she die? Lack faith. Lack faith. You don't know what people have. Just because they come up, you don't know what's going in their mind. You don't know what they do outside. You don't know what they say. So that's why you say this is an individual thing. And the Bible says it's according to your faith, be it unto you. So uh, if a hundred... Well, in, in Psalms 91, it says 1,000 are going to die on your right and 10,000 on the left. I don't care about the 10,000. I don't care about the 1,000. When I'm going through something, who am I caring about? 
myself. So that it's according to our faith, be it unto us. So we don't know what people believe. And we can't interpret. Uh, you have pretty shoes. You, you might say, oh, they're so pretty, but you know, but hey, they hurt me here, they hurt me in the back. I don't, from the outside, they look pretty, right? But you don't know where the shoe is hurting you, right? So we don't know when a person, they walk, we don't know what's going on in their minds. And it's not our job to know that. It's between them and God. So it's according to your faith, be it unto you. Amen? Okay, that's number three. So what's number one? Number two. Number three. And is healing available to some people? For everybody. Okay, what's number four? Raise your hand. Benefit number four, Gloriana. So the Holy Spirit, and one of the, the evidence of the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. So it's really the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, that once we accept the Lord Jesus, we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. Okay, immediately we're sealed by the Holy Spirit, but then we also have some benefits that are available to us, and that is, one of them is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking unknown tongues. But what else does that mean to you? Because you said it. So Holy Spirit, what is that? Gloriana? What is that? A way of communicating with God that nobody understands except, you know, just the spirit of the devil can interfere because he doesn't understand what you're saying and you don't even understand what your spirit and God are communicating. All right, praise God. So remember, the power of the Holy Spirit. So, but who is the Holy Spirit? God. Who else is the Holy Spirit? Okay, who's in charge of us as a church? The Holy Spirit. Remember, it's the Holy Spirit. So we have to understand, uh, the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is Jesus. God is the Holy Spirit. God is Jesus. Jesus is the Holy Spirit. Jesus is God. But uh, the one that's in charge is the Holy Spirit of us. So we have to talk to the Holy Spirit. We have to communicate and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And more importantly, we have to listen to the Holy Spirit. And remember this, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. Okay, he will not force his way into a conversation, into a relationship, unless we invite him in. So if Danise asks me a question and I start blabbering back answers without praying, without praying, ninety-eight percent of the answers, where is it coming from? From the flesh, because I didn't invite the Holy Spirit to tell me, Holy Spirit, look what Danise is asking me. Teach me or tell me what to respond to her in Jesus' name. Now, most of us, when they ask us a question, do we pray?